Hey, what's up, y'all? My name's Chris Abbott, but all my friends just call me Abbo. And in this video, we're going to be answering the question, how has technology changed the concept of community? Coming up. Now, like, Guts has to offer. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. If you guys are new to the channel, then we drop new videos every single day, five days a week, for pastors and church leaders, specifically helping you use social media and technology to grow your church. So in this video here, what we want to do is I'm just going to talk about some of the things that I've kind of experienced being in full-time ministry myself, and then some of the things that I've seen coaching churches over the last several years on how technology has kind of you know changed that concept of community. And especially with the pandemic, how it's kind of changed the way that we view church online and community and kind of what that looks like. So let's dive in. All right, so we're going to talk about six specific pieces of technology and platforms uh, that have kind of changed the concept of community, right? But I think it's important to understand, right? The pandemic didn't do anything that wasn't already happening, right? So if you think about it and you look at church growth statistics, right? Like church attendance was already on the decline, right? People were already spending uh, more time at home and watching online. Uh, the importance of digital was, was on the rise. But what happened is that COVID basically fast forwarded the world five years overnight, right? So all of a sudden that church decline went rapidly and fast forwarded five years overnight, right? The importance of digital, the importance of our live stream, right? And, and being able to reach people online, all of that got fast forwarded five years overnight and most of us weren't ready for it. So there's a couple of different platforms that have really uh, kind of come to prominence and become really, really important and that have completely changed this concept of community and that your church can actually be using in order to further that community. So let's kind of talk about those six platforms and and how your church can use them. All right, so the first one is the church online platform. And you're probably uh, familiar with this. It was created by Craig Rochelle and the team at Life Church, right? This is a completely free platform that you can use in order to live stream your church. I'm a huge, huge fan of this, right? So whenever churches ask me like how to get into the live streaming game and how to start live streaming for the very first time, I always uh, recommend this platform, right? It has uh, great video, it's got great features. It's got a chat feature, which is really robust because the point isn't just to put a live video out there and just live stream the church that you're having, but you want to have a back and forth, right? You want to be able to have a conversation. And the only way to do that is with a really robust chat feature, which is exactly what uh, Church Online has. And so one of the cool things is that you can also use the Church Online platform to live stream your service to YouTube. So now it automatically lives on YouTube afterwards. So people can not only watch uh, on your website or through the Church Online platform, but they can also watch on YouTube and then they can also so go back and watch your sermon just in case they missed it on Sunday. Pretty cool. All right, next up is Zoom. And <laughs> I don't know about you guys, I'm about sick of Zoom meetings. I can't tell you how many webinars uh, I was on on Zoom and how many one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching meetings I was on, how many times I'd hear a prominent pastor who's going to talk about what they were doing to get through the pandemic. So I'd jump on a Zoom meeting, right? Uh, we've had a million Zoom meetings up to this point. Uh, right? Kind of makes you wish you would have bought stock in Zoom, right? So here's the deal. Zoom has now kind of changed the game forever, right? It's, it's not going back to the way it was. So here's a couple of ways uh, that some churches are using Zoom and then maybe a couple of things that you can kind of think about and pray through for how your church might want to use Zoom as well. So a lot of churches have been using Zoom for uh, Bible studies, uh, for online devos with the pastor or staff, uh, for online small groups. I even had a, a friend of mine in California who literally used Zoom in the early days of the pandemic and created an online membership class, right? So what happened is he was running Facebook ads and he was reaching all these people who are now coming to his church and they were watching for the first time and they're engaging. But obviously everything was shut down in those early days of the pandemic. So he wasn't having in-person services, right? And it's like, okay, well, what's the next step? Normally the next step in person is always, hey, come to our membership class. So what he did is he actually created an online membership class and he used Zoom to facilitate it. And so the cool thing is the very first Saturday that he had that, he had 10 new people join his church through Zoom and that online membership class, right? And then all of them came back Sunday the next day to watch the live stream. And that's a really cool way that you can do it, right? Because especially with what's happening in the world right now is the local church doesn't have to be local anymore, right? It doesn't mean that we shut down our in-person services. It doesn't mean that we place any less importance on the in-person services, right? Because we know that biblical community is really, really important. But what about the people who might be overseas, right? What if it's soldiers from overseas who are in Iraq or Afghanistan and they want to be able to tune in to your church, 
right? Should they not be able to watch your church or join your church or be involved in a small group just because they live overseas? That's what's so great about the time that we live in right now is they could use Zoom and they could be part of a small group. They could be part of maybe a men's Bible study. They could literally uh, be jumping on with you as the pastor or go through an online membership class. They could literally do every single thing that someone does in person overseas and still be extremely connected. Not to mention they could be watching your live stream from your church online platform every single Sunday. All right, number three, Facebook. Now, there's a lot of different ways to use Facebook. We're not going to cover all of them uh, in this video, but I think one of the most intriguing ways that we can use Facebook specifically for the concept of community is Facebook groups. Facebook groups have kind of revolutionized the internet, and what's interesting with churches is I've seen a lot of really innovative and forward-thinking churches creating a church Facebook group, and now a lot of people will actually join a Facebook group before they ever actually join the church, right? And that that's crazy if you think about it, right? Like the thought just a couple of years ago that somebody might start watching you online and start actually like interacting with you and maybe even giving to your church, but they would join your Facebook group to be able to interact with you and other people in your church before they would actually join the church and ever set foot inside of a physical in-person service. That's a crazy thought, but that's exactly what's happening, right? So this is a great way, it kind of lowers the barrier of entry to have a next step for people to check out before they show up to an in-person and service. So I, I know of a church that's actually using this running Facebook ads into Facebook Messenger where they can have a conversation with people who live within driving distance of their church, right? And say, hey, how can I pray for you? They can have a conversation inside of Facebook Messenger about prayer and actually pray for them. And then instead of inviting them out to the church on Sunday, now they invite them to the Facebook group. And say, hey, why don't you join our church Facebook group, right? We've got a lot of discussions in there. I've uh, got a lot of great people. We do some fun stuff. We even do like, you know, uh, meet the pastor once a week. We'd love to have you in there. Now it's a lower barrier of entry to get people into a Facebook group where now they can interact with your culture and kind of get uh, a sense of your DNA, right? And kind of your vision and how you guys do things. And then it's a much easier step for them to visit for the very first time on Sunday. Okay, so before I get to my last three technology platforms, I want to hear from you. What are some ways that your church has been using technology in order to further that concept of community and be able to connect with people online uh, or in person, right? So put it in the comments below. I want to hear from you. How is your church using technology to connect with people. All right, number four, Instagram. Now, we talked about Facebook before and we've talked about Instagram on this channel before, but I think Instagram is really, really interesting because, you know, you have Facebook, 2.7 billion people on Facebook, 1.8 billion log in every single day, but Instagram is owned by Facebook and Instagram itself has another 1 billion people on it. Right? That's a lot of users, that's a lot of people, and especially with that 18 to 24 demo, you have a lot more younger people on Instagram. And so one of the ways that you can foster community is with Instagram. And I think sometimes it's actually in ways that you may not think of. Two of my favorite ways to use Instagram uh, for this is number one, Instagram stories. Right, so the way that a lot of millennials actually get ready in the morning is they will literally wake up in the morning, they'll grab their phone, they'll walk into the bathroom, and as they're getting ready, they'll literally just prop their phone up on the mirror in front of them and just click on Instagram stories, and they'll just let Instagram stories play while they're brushing their teeth or doing their hair or doing their makeup and kind of getting ready for the day. Right, It's a crazy thought, but just go ask a couple of millennials. You'll see, I'm not making this up. This is how a lot of them get ready, and it's how they kind of stay connected with the world. So this is a great way for uh, you as the pastor and your church to be able to show up in their daily lives is by posting on Instagram stories, right? And the best way to do this is just to treat Instagram stories like your behind the scenes reality show, right? So if you're going on uh, you know, date night with your spouse, you can actually just post that to your story. Or if you're getting ready for sermon prep, you can post it on there. If you're on vacation, maybe you're just going over to meet someone in the church, or maybe you're meeting with the worship team to talk about the upcoming set list this week, right? Whatever it is, post that on Instagram stories. People love behind the scenes, and this is a great way to kind of create more of a personal connection between you and everyone else in a way that's actually scalable. The second way is with chatbots and Instagram Direct, right? And so I think they're actually just gonna take Instagram Messenger here soon. In fact, by the time you watch this video, maybe they've already done this, but I think uh, Messenger is just going to become the way that people communicate through Facebook and Instagram. And I think Messenger is gonna kind of merge and now you're gonna be able to uh, not only talk uh, on both platforms, but I also think you're gonna be able to run chatbots natively on both Facebook and Instagram, right? So right now at the time of this video, you can run chatbots on Facebook, uh, but you can't run them on Instagram. But I think that's going to change very, very soon. And uh, chatbots 
that's a really powerful way for you to be able to interact with people inside and outside of your church. You can even run a Facebook or Instagram ad that takes people inside of Facebook Messenger, kicks off a chatbot, which is basically just a series of automated responses, predetermined answers to questions that people are asking via Messenger. So I think Instagram is gonna be a really, really cool way to be able to continue to foster uh, community. And there's even a version of Instagram groups. That's pretty cool. So if you haven't looked into Instagram in a while and checked out some of the new features that they have on kind of how to create community, I definitely recommend checking it out. All right, number five, YouTube. Now, we talked a little bit about this in uh, number one when we were talking about the church online platform, but a couple of things to understand about YouTube. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, second only to Google. Right? So think about it. It's not social media. It's a search engine. And so while social media posts, you put them on maybe your Facebook page or Instagram or even Twitter if you guys are on Twitter, right? And maybe you get a little bit of a spike, get some engagement for like a day or two, maybe three, but then everything falls off and basically dies. With YouTube, it's the exact opposite. The longer your content lives on YouTube, the more people are going to continue to find it and the more it has a chance to actually rank for some different search terms. So this is actually what a lot of millennials and Gen Zers do. They actually don't even Google anymore. They go to YouTube. So if they wanna know how to do something, they don't go type in how to run a Facebook ad to Google, they type in how to run a Facebook ad to YouTube and they watch a video on it. So this is an important shift in culture, especially if we're trying to reach the next generation. So it's important to kind of understand that and understand that your church definitely has to be on YouTube if you want to continue to attract new visitors and especially if you're trying to reach the next generation. All right, and finally, one of my favorites, text in church. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Texan Church, it was built by Tyler Smith, and he has an incredible team behind him. They've been doing this for years, but this is one of my single favorite tools. Years ago, when I was on staff at my church, what I did is I actually created a 12-week follow-up system using Texan Church, right, which is automated text messages, emails, and then even reminders to send personal phone calls. And we would set that up using Texan Church, and all we would have to do is on Monday morning, we would take every Connect card from Sunday, we would drop in people name, email, and phone number. And as soon as we uploaded it into that group, it would automatically kick off uh, a 12-week follow-up system, right? Completely automated. And so now we were following up with people and inviting them back to church, but we were doing it in a way that was scalable because at the time we had hundreds of visitors coming in every single month and there was just no way to keep up with everybody. So I'm a huge fan of text and church because you can use it for your follow-up system. You can use it for uh, talking to your volunteers. You could set up just a men's ministry group, which is all of the people who are in your men's ministry and you could communicate to them every single week and instead of just sending out one text message to every single person or creating a thread inside of iMessage or something like that now you can actually go in and create everything inside of text and church and you can send one message that goes out to absolutely everybody and they can reply and you can have one-on-one -on -one conversations so really, really cool. You can also use this for plan your visit, which if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I'm really, really excited and really passionate about using plan your visit. And Text and Church is a phenomenal way to do that. If you guys uh, actually wanna try out Text and Church, I actually convinced them to uh, set up a discount link for you guys. And so if you click on the link in the description below, you can actually get 90 days of Text and Church absolutely free. So you can test drive it. You can try out the plan a visit feature, which I highly recommend. You can try out some of the uh, follow-up systems that they have built in and some of the different features, but I believe that this is really going to help foster community between you and your church using Text and Church.